dogs, cats, cattle, birds, etc. are all domestic animals. Originally, all these were wild animals. However, the ancient man understood the capabilities of these animals and farmed and domesticated them to help him in his daily needs and activities. These domesticated animals provide him food such as milk, meat, eggs, clothing, etc. They also help him in travel and transport. When these animals are helpful to man, man also has to protect them, provide them with food and take care of these domestic animals. To have a good breed of domestic animals, Selective breeding process has to be done and man has to rear them. Maintain the health of these animals apart from feeding them. All these processes have become a big industry by itself and provide employment to several people. Now a situation has come that man cannot live without these animals and the domesticated animals also cannot survive in wild conditions. Thus. The relationship is mutually beneficial. Pet animals such as parrots, cats are not particularly helpful to man but they appeal to the aesthetic sense of man, give him company, immense pleasure and happiness. After coming out of his nomadic life, man started establishing settlements. He slowly learned the agricultural operation and also domestication of wild animals. All this happened several centuries ago. Due to domestication of wild animals and development of agriculture, man got a continuous supply of food throughout the year. The time and effort in hunting wild animals is also reduced. Thus, the uncertainty of producing food by hunting is also eliminated. Cattle, goat, sheep, pigs and horses were the most important animals that were domesticated for the purpose of food and also for skin which is used for clothing. Similarly, bulls and horses were used for agricultural operations and transport. At the same time, many birds were also domesticated such as fowl and ducks to satisfy the needs of his food. While domesticating wild animals, several factors are considered such as availability around human settlements, man's ability to home and domesticate these animals, their utility in his daily life, their rate of growth and reproduction and finally the effectiveness of their maintenance. As man tried to improve the important qualities such as milk and meat healed of these domestic animals, several changes have come into their lives and the resemblance with the original wild ancestors living in the wild was slowly reduced and disappeared totally. Domestication brought a radical change in the size, shape, color, weight, behavior, eating habits, rate of growth and reproducing in these animals. Examples can be seen in many domestic animals and their wild ancestors. For example, the wild fowl weighs about 0.6 to 0.7 kgs and lays about 12 to 20 eggs in a year. But the domestic fowl, which was derived from the jungle fowl, weighs about 3 to 3.5 kgs and lays about 300 eggs in a year. We will now see the cattle how they have come into the domestication of man. Cattle means cows, buffaloes and bulls. Cattle are also known as livestock. Even in the Vedas there was a mention of cattle. Cattle have been domesticated since 6000 years. It is supposed that probably the wild oxen may be the ancestor of different breeds of recent day cattle. The primary purpose of domesticating cattle was for food, its milk and meat. However, it was found that cattle are useful in many ways, agricultural operations, transporting loads from place to place and their skin is used for making leather goods. 
buffaloes are not that much popular in western countries but in India buffaloes are red for milk and their skin is used for making leather goods. The ancestral wild cow produced very little milk which was enough to feed its calf. Due to the constant efforts of man by selecting and cross breeding has changed the characters of the wild animal and the present day animals are capable of producing 20 to 30 liters of milk per day. Efforts are still going on to make the cow yield more milk with high fat content. In India, cattle are used for agricultural operations. Mechanization has reduced using this animal power in recent years in agriculture. The cattle meat is known as beef. In western countries, beef is more popular as food and special breeds of cattle are red for this purpose. If the cattle are red for beef, the milk producing gets reduced. Rearing of meat producing birds is known as poultry. The term poultry is generally used for chick farming. Chick farming is one of the major activities in the country and Andhra Pradesh produces about one-fifth of the total egg producing in the country and that equals to about 1.2 crore eggs are produced per day in our state. Probably jungle fowl might be the wild ancestor of today's domesticated bird. In the process of domestication, many selective breeding techniques have been used to improve the yield of egg and meat from the domestic fowl. These birds that are domesticated for eggs are known as layers and those grown for the producing of meat are called broilers. The birds that are in the villages move freely and eat the worms and grains available around. Their nutritional value may not be the same all the time and proper attention is not paid towards their growth. Hence the meat and egg yield is low and below the standard and it is not consistent from bird to bird. In poultry farms, special breeds of birds are kept in large protected areas and are provided with nutritious food. Proper lighting is provided to stimulate egg production and proper care is also taken to prevent diseases. If all the above precautions are taken, each bird lays about 300 eggs per year. Rhode Island and Leghorns are most popular breeds in India. Goats were domesticated much before the sheep and cattle. The domestication of goat was primarily for their meat, milk and skin. As the domestication of sheep and cattle started picking up, the importance of domesticating of goat has been reduced. Of all the breeds, Angora breed of goat is famous for its smooth, silky wool. Sheep were domesticated in the Middle Eastern countries around the same time when the goats were domesticated. Wild sheep of Central Asia might be the ancestor of the present day sheep. The sheep was later introduced into America by Columbus and New Zealand and Australia around 18th century. Sheep are domesticated for their meat, wool and skin. There are two types of hair on the body of the sheep. First type is long stiff and stronger and are called primary hair. The other type of hair are short, smooth, silky and curled. These are secondary hair or wool or fleece. Wool is clipped from the sheep's body once or twice a year and are processed for making woolen clothes. Woolen clothes have good heat retaining capacity and excellent as winter wear. The Mexico breed from Spain and Corradale bred from New Zealand are famous for their best quantity of wool. The skin of Kawakul breed of sheep from the Central Asia is the best. The domestication of pig started 8000 years ago. Pig's meat is staple food for many people. The rate of growth and reproduction is much higher in pigs when compared to cattle, sheep, goat or horse. A female pig can give birth to two 
to 20 piglets at a time and 2 to 3 times in a year. Pig rearing is cheaper compared to the rearing of other animals. Pork is the meat of pig. In our country, the pigs live in unhygienic conditions. But in other countries, pigs are grown in hygienic conditions and their meat has a great demand. Berkshire and Yorkshire breeds of pig are famous for their meat. The skin of pig is used for making leather goods. The hair of the pig is used in making painting brushes. The domestication of horse started about 4000 years ago. They are very much useful in agricultural operations and transport. Its meat and milk are also useful. There was a time when horses were used for transport all over the world. In European countries, they were used for agriculture also. In the agricultural and transport sector, mechanization has slowly crept in and the use of animals like horses has reduced. Now, the horse has become a sporting animal. The ancestral wild horses may be the ones that lived in Central Asia and Russia such as Prawalski horse are the ancestors of the present day horse. The horse strength and stamina is being enhanced by techniques of selective breeding. The rate of reproduction in horses is very low when compared to cattle. Mules are hybrids between a male donkey and female horse. Mules are bigger than donkeys and stronger than horses. They are also sexually sterile and cannot breed by themselves. Mules are used to carry heavy bags in the Himalayas by the Indian Army. In short, the domestication of wild animals has helped man in many ways apart from providing us with food.